All right, Black Box Radio, we have Mr. Ricky Vaughn. Say hi to the people, bro. Good evening, family. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We appreciate having you. You know, you VIP at the box. So <laughs> we all family over here. <laughs> Thank you. Would I, get, would I get in trouble for saying I was the first political candidate on this show officially? You will never get in trouble. You are that. That is your trophy for life. That is a, a special place in my heart. So I, I always, when I talk to folks, I always say I was the first political candidate uh, to be interviewed on the uh, awesome, uh, uh, amazing uh, Black Box Radio with the Queen herself. So thank you. I'm humbled and, I, and I'm happy to be back again. So thank you for having me. Yeah, you had to do a Rona report because, you know, you're a mayor candidate for 2020. Yes, yes. And, and, and you know, it's, it's I'm, I'm glad you're bringing this this to the people um, in real time uh, because it's, it's needed. Uh, I believe it's needed to not only encourage and empower uh, individuals to move forward, but also to look back at a learning experience. Uh, and that's what I do in my personal life. That's what I do in business. Uh, I always reflect, you know, what could I have done? Uh, I, I don't always, you know, in, 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 stay in the past. You know, you don't you, when you reflect, you don't want to stay in a reflection, but you want to take some time to step back, sit aside and actually learn from that. And I believe that's part of the, pro- the healing process and the process to move forward. So professionally, other like because you also have your restaurants and your how is that boating in COVID-19? You know, it's some challenges, uh, of course. Um, uh, and unfortunately, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate where all of my restaurants uh, are able to uh, stay open uh, mm-hmm. to keep staff employed. Uh, I'm, I'm extremely honored to say, uh, you know, last time I was on your show, I reported 121 restaurants. Now we're at 122 restaurants uh, mm-hmm. and 122 rest- restaurants remain open to today. Uh, so, you know, we're fortunate on that end. Uh, we've, you know, we have some some benefits uh, kind of uh, projected in or factored into our company where it allows folks to have, of course, sick days off and all that. And we have great teams. We have teams say, you know what, I don't want to use my sick days. I want to stay at work. Uh, but, you know, it has been challenging when you talk about a small business owner. You know, a lot of people won't realize I'm still a small business owner, even with that quantity of stores mm-hmm. uh, compared to Fortune 500 companies. Uh, and it's it's sad, you know, when you got Fortune 500 companies that applied for stimulus support, stimulus help, and they were granted and, and, and given it. But when you got the small business owner, the mom and pop, the barber on the end of the corner that applied, they were rejected. Uh, and and either not only rejected, but applications kind of got processed late or they couldn't mm-hmm. process applications. Uh, so it, it's, you know, and, and it may not directly impact me, but it does impact me because I, I feel for those business owners. I mean, again, if, if I didn't have, you know, I, I purchased a restaurant a couple of months ago and part of the stimulus assistance was you had to own the restaurant. So you had to own the business. Let me not say restaurant. You had to own the business prior to February 15th. Well, mm-hmm. I purchased this restaurant on February 28th. So wow. what if I was the mom and pop that just purchased, put my life savings in purchasing this restaurant on the 28th of February, but because of wording of legislation, I'm not eligible. I put all my life savings in this and mm-hmm. I just missed it by 15 days, right? 14 days. And I, I don't, I don't qualify for anything. And this restaurant I'm speaking about in particular, if I didn't have other restaurants, I would probably be shutting the doors for good, uh, probably a couple of weeks ago. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, so the store went from making great income a week, uh, to, you know, a thousand bucks, if that $800 a day. And mm-hmm. so again, for those a business owner that would have been their very first restaurant that's that's you know uh, looking at the american dream and 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 wanting to be part of that american dream they would have owned the restaurant for two months before they had to shut the doors and they've invested all their life savings in Mm. why is there even a date in the legislation though The, the, the reason is because the government on all levels local state federal they know how to word and draft document documents and legislation that continues to hold certain folks back. 
we can play around this. We can tiptoe and dance around it, but we need to put all the cards on the tape. When you look at the businesses that were the most impacted by this coronavirus, right? It has been the black and brown businesses, period. Period. We continue to hear that the black and brown businesses are the heart uh, and the key of this economy uh, in states and cities uh, and as a country. But yet, If you look and I'm waiting, I've been asking for it. Where's the report to show how many out of this stimulus package, how many African-American or black organizations or, or, or owners were actually awarded these funds compared to the L.A. Lakers and, you know, the the other big 500 fortune uh, companies. I'm I'm I'm, in, I'm interested to see the percentage breakdown of that, because I know and I did a, a, a little small study. And I got blasted on social media behind it, right? Uh, <laughs> saying, oh, you're only focusing on black businesses. Well, let me just set the record clear. I am from Baltimore City. I happen to be black and I happen to be a business owner and a male. So, yes, I'm going to continue to look at the <laughs> impacts on a black, young, African-American from an African-American perspective. Period. Yep. I can't change that. So. Yep. I called 30 uh, different business owners in the restaurants and retail, one of them on a, a Foot Locker. And I asked him, I said, hey, guys, did you apply for it? And, you know, did you would you reward it? Because you find out, you know, a couple of days in advance, you get this email from your financial institution to say you've been awarded or your application has been rejected because such and such. Or we're not taking any applications right now, which we all know we heard that from Wells Fargo and Bank of America. So yeah. out of 30 individuals I spoke to all black two, and this is in multiple states because because I own stores in multiple states, eight, eight states to be exact. Mm-hmm. Two out of 30 said they were awarded the funds. Mm, mm, mm. It's America doing the same business. Business as usual, bro. Business, B- business as usual. But yeah, mm-hmm. I get blasted. And the lady and, and one of the people on social media, she said, well, did you call any white owners? <laughs> I sure enough did. I called 10 of them. Uh, and out of the 10, eight were awarded. So, and, and I also listed, I said, would you like their names and their telephone numbers for the 30 blacks and the 10 whites? So, you know, again, people are trying to make this out to be a race. I'm not looking at, I'm not racist. I'm not, no racist bone in my body, but I'm giving you facts from internal what we've been doing. And one thing that a lot of people do, they try to, you know, kind of throw some, 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 you know, some, uh, a little bit of a shade or whatever out there to try to support their statement. I'm mm-hmm. always willing to give you facts. I, I, all third out of the 40 business owners, 10 white, 30 black, I am more than happy to give their names, their addresses, their telephone numbers. Cause I asked them, can I give that information prior to doing a survey? Isn't that something? I tell you, America, I'm telling you, we never <laughs> stop. Even <laughs> doing catastrophe, we find a way to be racist. I swear. We- we never stop because we of never stop. it's such a cancer in this society. And you can say it's not, and we can say you pull in a race car, whatever. But if you look at the numbers, but America has had this and the people of America has had this biggest, they cannot accept what they see. It's like, you see the numbers, you see the facts, but then you try to way, find a way to blame the victim. I just, it, I don't understand it. But you know, the, the, we will unfortunately continue down this, this, this era if we do not hold folks accountable. Mm-hmm. And in the black community, uh, and I've said this before, and and uh, you know, I've been on your show, and folks that know me and follow me, they always and, and some don't even like when I make this comment. I, I would love folks' votes. I would love their endorsements, their support. But more than anything, this election cycle and moving forward, I want folks to do their research on every single candidate running for certain offices, you know, right? So if you're, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you got 30 mayoral candidates running. Uh, That's just too many. No, it's not. It's really not. That's options. Now we have options. Before we used to have three. And it was a who is the worst or the best out of the worst that we have. Now you have 30 candidates or in the uh, president city council race, you got eight of them. Now we have options as voters. So we have to stop voting popularity. 
uh, and we have to start voting folks that will have commitment to the people and not to the developers and big endorsers that send them $250,000 checks. And until we elect folks that will go into office, that will go into City Hall and remember Harford and Broadway or North and Penn, remember the streets that they came from, we're going to continue to have these folks get into office, write legislation that always either hold us back or keep us exactly where we are so that we won't gain and we won't gain that power and override them. Holding accountable. I've been saying that forever, but uh, we have to vote. We have to use the tools in the toolbox. And um, right now, folks are talking about right now, how, how, how does the community bounce back from this type of terror? Because we already have trauma. Um, and so unresolved trauma in our community. But now we're almost, it's like we're being terrorized and it's not by a force. It's the coronavirus. It's here. And um, some families are being proliferated. How do we come back as a unit? Because I've seen some beautiful things from Black people during this time. Absolutely. And, and I think the way we come back is is how, and I'm going to say it like it is, how the Black community has always come back. And it's through unity. Um, you know, mm-hmm. we've we've as a culture had unity back when it was the slavery days. We mm-hmm. rallied behind each other. We pulled each other up. You know, when you still talk about, you know, the family, you know, family dinners on Sundays. Right. That that was that was initiated back in the slavery days when blacks got together and they supported each other. So the way we get past this and we, we come out of this is by supporting each other, which I have seen. Uh, beyond, I mean, it, hmm. it, it, it's so sad and, uh, and unfortunate that we had to go through this to see that love of yeah. folks packing up lunches and and boxes of food for two weeks for families that they don't even know, mm-hmm. uh, and and calling folks. You know, it's I, I was in the the Oliver community and they had a list going around with everyone's telephone number on it and and address and and saying, hey, you know, uh, on Monday, uh, so Susan is going to call the whole block. And on Tuesday, this person, it was amazing to see the love that we have. You know, folks talk about Baltimore City, but they don't talk about the love and the passion that Baltimore City had for each other. So, you know, I'm even happy to even partner with other mayoral candidates, Mm -hmm. um, candidates running for other uh, local offices and state offices, as well as some of our uh, current uh, elected officials, because it's not about politics right now. It's really about, you know, my 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 66 year old mom uh, that is that is at my house. I wanted her here. You know, my mom lives in a senior building. And I said, no, I want you at my house. You know, my house is I got plenty enough room. Um, mm-hmm. you know, she don't cook, but, you know, it'll get through that another day. Um, <laughs> but, you know, she's here. She's spending time with with her, my our her grandson, my wife and our son. Um, you know, and it's and it's really that time to not only continue to look out for your neighbor, but to build the family connections. I mean, I don't remember the last time I was able to sit down at night and read a book to my son that's three years old. So Mm -hmm. it's also an opportunity for us to build within, you know, we talk about um, building history and relationships. I mean, it's amazing. Like even my son, you know, he looked at me like, okay, dad, you're home. You (laughs) do know it's like 930 at night, right? So, uh, you know, it's just a great, it's a, unfortunately it, it took this, but I believe that this is going to make us stronger than we had before. And I always tell people, folks, it's like what Donna McCurtain said, we fall down, we get back up again. We've been knocked down so many times. But the mm-hmm. one thing about Baltimore City and one thing about our communities is we get up stronger than we fell. And so this is going to be one of those experiences that we're going to take. We're going to reflect. We're going to look back. And I believe we're going to take this challenge. Uh, we're going to you know, surpass it. And we're going to make sure that we continue to promote uh, love and, 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 and unity in our communities. I agree. I totally agree. And I just think, Rick, we on this, uh, it's a reset. You know, I've yeah. been hearing it from the other Ronald reportees. But it's like we're starting over. And I think we needed it. A lot of things people are cleaning up and addressing that they needed to address and their relationships with their family. So sometimes you need a stop and for you to actually realize what really matters. Absolutely. And, and, you know, it's, it's also what I've been looking at 
is how do you build from this, right? So mm-hmm. we, uh, we have had the opportunity, or I, you know, I always look at the opportunity in something. This is a perfect opportunity to say, you know what, how do we be more proactive versus reactive? So for example, some of the things that we're doing within my, my campaign and my, and my company, I, I'm gonna say my company more than campaign, is that we're working with different neighborhood associations and communities and faith-based organizations to make sure that we have food pantries in every single Single community throughout Baltimore City, so mm. we don't want to we don't want to ramble when the when, when unfortunately this this comes up, it, whether it's in my lifetime and generation or the next generation. We mm-hmm. want to make sure that folks know exactly if something like this happens. If I live in the two one two one five, these are the three spots that I can go to that's going to have um, uh, food, uh, mm-hmm. that's going to have uh, uh, date uh, reliable childcare for. Uh, essential, you know, workers uh, that's going to have um, pastors that are going to kind of uh, rotate on a weekly basis if you want to just pick up the phone and call and have a prayer. So but these are things that you do proactive um, and not reactive. Because I see now, you know, how everyone is all of the support is coming from everywhere and it's kind of splintered, but it's it's all from love. It's just people trying to help. Yes. But if yes. you get a place where people can land, then it becomes a very concerted effort. Well, and absolutely. And I don't want to take anything away from all of the different organizations and individuals, because it's a lot of individuals out there, too, that are doing things. But some of the challenges is just like the way our city government is is, is running or, or being ran in Baltimore City, which is we got so many resources out there, but they're all over the place. And folks don't know where to go. Do I go here? Do I go there? Oh. They close at three o'clock. So another thing that we're working on is one central uh, website. And I've actually uh, sponsored the the hosting of it. One central website uh, that's going to and it's called the uh, Baltimore of Love. Right. So it's one central website that everyone's going to be able to go to. And again, if you live in this zip code, uh, it's going to tell you where the resources are for that zip code. Because unfortunately, we have in the city of Baltimore, we have certain pockets that are not represented. Like, you know, if I live in this area, for a perfect example, if I live in 21213, which is a huge uh, a population when it comes to teenagers, where do I go to make sure I get support, not only whether it's food or anything else, but even education. So mm-hmm. we have to make sure that we identify every zip code, every community in Baltimore, whereas they can click on the website, whatever they need. Here it is. You don't have to catch two buses and a light rail because they're running on schedules are uh, limited schedules anyway. So mm-hmm. now you don't have to go all the way across the city to get this box of food or whatever the case may be. It's right here in your back because again, you want to keep people safe. So mm-hmm. now you don't have to risk yourself or risk your family and going all across the city to get these supplies and these resources. It's right there in your zip code. Well, that's a great thing because how we playing with the earth, you don't know what's going to come up. So we need to get some strategic, get some things in place. So if anything comes about, we're ready. And, Absolutely. And that's a good place to be. I mean, so proactive is where is that? So, We're even looking at uh, growing food, uh, fruits and vegetables. I'm working right. with uh, uh, Doc Cheatham, uh, who's mm-hmm. over in West Baltimore. I'm working with Bishop Wortham, who's also over there in West Baltimore and East Baltimore. I'm working with Bishop Carter, um, you know, uh, Dr. Halfaway over in uh, in West Baltimore as well, uh, down near the Drew. Drew uh, Drew Hill Avenue area at Unity. So working with different, you know, I'm in Northwest Baltimore, working with different faith based and organizations also, but we're going to have community gardens. And again, this is going to be, you know, one thing of how you change the culture is you have to change the heart. Uh, you know, I've been saying that for years. If you want to change culture, you change the heart. You want to you want to talk and address crime, then you change the hearts and have folks start loving each other and stop hating each other. So this is going to also be able or, or another initiative where you're able to start building unity in communities and love within the communities. And a lot of that is going to be the our elders, our seniors who paved the way for us to kind of mentor our young adults. And this is, again, going to help get them off the street, get them involved in something positive. And it's going to be something that's, you know, ongoing, right? Because we always, when we talk about being proactive, you don't just come up with an idea one day and you say, oh, this is a good idea. This is what we're going to do. And you leave it alone. It's always a working progress. So it's going to mm-hmm. be, you know, something that our young folks and, and our communities can always stay involved in. Because again, when we start banking food and, and food, food banks and food deserts, then, you know, food expire. So we're going to always have to make sure right before that, it's just like running a restaurant right before that food expire. We want to get it out, you know, off the shelves. Uh, and so we got to do the same thing now uh, with making sure that we are 
prepared better moving forward as a as not only as a city but as a country. Love it, love it. So listen, this we're at the part of the interview where we have um, a last will and testament, and that's where we leave with the people, Jewel, because we're in uncertain times, and we all need inspiration. So leave the people, Ricky Vaughn's Jewel. I always say, do not let your history dictate our destiny. Um, so we we we've let, we we've gone through some 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 troubled times. Uh, but we have to pull together in, in love and unity. We got to make sure that we're we're pulling everyone up with us and not certain selected folks with us. Uh, and so, you know, I keep mine short and sweet. You know, don't let your history uh, dictate your destiny. And, and we're going to do this to the, together. We're going to get through this together. Uh, and, you know, this is something that has has shocked the nation, has shocked the, the country. Right. But at the end of the day. It's what makes us stronger, uh, who we are. But love your family, love your neighbors, uh, and make sure that you're out there supporting your family and supporting your neighbors. You know, I believe that uh, blessings uh, come to those that are a blessing to someone else. Uh, and that's what uh, I have hopefully, not only within, you know, my campaign, within my company, but within my personal life. That's how I looked at it. I, I think, you know, when we spoke before, I told you, you know, I, I never grew up and said I wanted to be rich, right? I just wanted to have enough money to take my wife out when my credit card didn't get declined. Uh, I was tired of saying my car is getting repoed. Uh, I was homeless for two years as a teenager. I just wanted, you know, hey, enough money to buy some oodles and noodles and peanut butter and jelly, which is my favorite meal. Uh, and so part of that is making sure that we take care of our, you know, am I my brother's keeper? Am I my sister's keeper? And making sure that we, we stick to that. And uh, that's just me, you know. The real Ricky Vaughn. Real awesome. Ricky Vaughn. <laughs> awesome. G. Uh, Ricky, thank you so much for spending some time with us this afternoon and adding your voice and your unique and powerful perspective to the Rona Report. Always a pleasure to hear from you. I appreciate you all for making sure. Thank you for having me, but I appreciate you, you both for making sure that the messages get out there. Uh, and this is so crucial to uh, the community, especially the black community. We need to hear what's going on and we need to hear, you know, some encouragement and empowerment as well. You know, again, we know what's going on. We see it, unfold, you know, we see it unfold. We hear it unfold. But at the end of the day, how do we move forward together in love and in unity? And how do we move forward together in preparation and being more, more proactive than reactive? And that's what we're going to continue to do uh, in Baltimore City for those that are listening uh, from from outside of Baltimore City, this is who we are. We are a city about love. We don't get we don't get uh, caught up in in all this hate and all this that's on the media and on the TVs. We're going to be a city and a community that continue to go out there and support each other, regardless of what neighborhood or zip code you live in. This is Baltimore. Is that Baltimore strong? Baltimore love. You heard it there. Uh, and if you are listening right now, you can find all the voices in the Rona Report at blackboxradio.com. That's B-L-A-K-B-O-X-X-R-A-D-I-O.com. You can also find Black Box Radio on Facebook and Instagram at Black Box Radio. And you can find Black Box Radio on Twitter at Box Black. That's B-O-X-X-B-L-A-K. And please, when you hear this, Please share it with your friends, your family. Uh, the message is being suppressed on these social media platforms. So we're counting on the community to help us get these important voices heard. All right. Ricky Vaughn, always a pleasure. You never disappoint. Well, we thank you. you. We really I appreciate, appreciate y'all. And be safe out there as you hustling, bro. Really be safe. I appreciate it, Queen. Thank you. And anything I can do and always support, please let me know because you guys know you're in my heart and my prayers. And uh, yeah, I'm always here for you. <laughs> Likewise, that's a ditto. So we're in the Rona Report. It is four. No, excuse me. It is three. Yes, yeah, four twenty nine twenty. Black Box Radio. We're out. Peace. Peace.